welcome to Sushi Bites. This is Utsurum Des Kawauso Hawaii Iku. It is a video game for the Nintendo Famicom. It is based on the Utsurum Des manga series, whose main character is an otter or sea otter. This game, much like the manga it's based on, is all about circumventing convention and being as different as possible. There is no joke. The joke is that there is no joke. Let's just break the rules for comedy's sake. And that's exactly what this game does. So for starters, our title screen has to be pressed twice before it will actually appear, which is convention breaking already. But the game's gonna get even more ridiculous. How about Living Boots. We started the game and there are boots that are alive. Kind of a throwback to Time Zone, maybe? And why not a jumping boot that appears to have a beak? Amazingly creative design, 1010 would hire again. And dictionaries that shoot kanji at you. Wonderful. This same person runs every shop in the game. Better get used to seeing that face. Now here, you would have to go into the spikes, right? Well, no. You can walk up the backdrop. You can walk on the backdrop. What is this? What are you doing? Why are you breaking convention? But I, I don't see where I'm supposed to go. Get used to this face, you'll be seeing it a lot. Green pipes, like in that Mario Brother game. You know the one. Oh, I see, we gotta go down them. <laughs> Funny. So our first boss is clearly a Kappa from Japanese mythology, hence the bald patch on the top of the head and being green and everything. The majority of bosses in this game are actually fairly easy to defeat if you just keep hitting them. <laughs> Which makes sense. Yeah. Didn't realise how dumb what I said was until I said it. He goes running off crying. Nice to see we're playing as the bully. Now this second level is really annoying to begin with because it requires you do something really cryptic. And I'm sure if you can read Japanese and see what this Kappa is saying, it probably makes sense. However, I had to read a guide, because this area just repeats and repeats and repeats until you do what you're asked to do. Dance in front of the ghosts. You have to dance in front of two ghosts. Dance in front of them, and if you do, you can leave the forest. That's so ridiculous. By this time, you'll already have more money than you'll ever need for any of the for any of the shops in the game. So, yeah, the platforming mechanics—they are really, really awkward, really stiff. So the second boss is a giant beetle of some kind. Yeah. And it shoots out blue balls in a kind of difficult to predict pattern. Failing on the boss takes you back here, which isn't too far, but it's just the annoyance of having to come back here and fight these two enemies again. This game was such a drain to play through. Like, I could feel my energy being sapped out of my body. Well, 
World 3 is a city. To start with, anyway. I don't know what these guys have done to you, they're just sort of walking past, enjoying... Enjoying life and taking every minute as it comes, and then just a giant sea otter punches them in the face. Yeah... I suppose it's not a great day for them. Now, this level has 11 floors in it. You don't have to go on any of the floors, like, there's nothing really besides shops and enemies. And shops always only ever sell extra health or items, really. All you have to do is go up to the 11th floor in the first elevator and then take the first door on the left. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. Again, I had to read a guide to find this out, because I was... I was peeing about here for hours. Okay, that's a exaggeration. I was peeing about here for about 10 minutes. And 10 minutes feels like hours. So the boss of this level are alien twins, who come to Earth in a UFO. How do we know that? Because the word UFO is in the background. Very creative. Again, a fairly easy boss battle. The majority of the boss battles in this game are... This level is the airport, and then a giant plane as well. This level introduces the frog enemies, which I absolutely despise. They jump over you like Mega Man. And they're incredibly difficult to hit. Luckily, you can take that frog guy out with barely any trouble. And now on to the wing of the plane. Or perhaps on top of the plane, I'm not really sure. And our boss for this stage is the Japanese equivalent of Superman. I'm sure it's an actual character in the in the actual manga, but I haven't read that. What I'm trying to do here is use my super special move that damages everything on screen, but the timing for it is incredibly difficult, and if you're a single bit over, you use a skill that has a picture of a flower pot and does absolutely nothing and leaves you vulnerable for about three seconds. Anyway, that's Superman done, and for some reason he explodes as he goes down, so maybe he was a robot, I don't know. Let's carry on, shall we? So this is the desert level. I'm assuming it's Egypt, I don't think there were any pyramids anywhere else. I then did something really stupid here. Um. Because I couldn't figure out where to go, I jumped up the cactus on the left using the tiny pixel that you can grab onto, and then that's it. I was stuck here. There was no way out of this situation. Imagine playing on the hardware and this happens, and there's no way out. I mean, that would suck, wouldn't it? Okay, so I've jumped to level 6. This is the moon, because apparently... Well, I think it's the moon? <laughs> the giant sphinx doesn't help, um, but the low gravity swimming and the earth in the background seems to suggest it's the moon. Either way, I wouldn't have thought the moon would be on your list of stops on the way to Hawaii, but... <laughs> You know, I haven't actually been to Hawaii, so I don't know whether the moon is actually one of the places in Stonehenge? Mr. Yes, yeah, so a man made of sand lives on the moon. Whatever you say, Utsurundes, whatever you say. So now we are in, I'm assuming, the Arctic. We've got these annoying frogs to deal with. Now this level has some really tricky jumps, bad enemy placement, and it has water. 
If you just swim underneath the stage, you avoid the guys throwing melons at you, you avoid the guys with tambourines, you avoid the frogs, you do miss your opportunity to go to the shop, but you should see what's coming up. You'll understand why I stick to the water in this level. More frogs. It's almost like this stage was designed with just swimming in mind. Because it's particularly mean with the layouts of stuff. And there's plenty of opportunities for you to jump back up, but as you'll see, there's still tons of enemies. A naked guy, apparently. And you have the opportunity now to jump up out of the water and fight the boss, but if you swim underneath, you don't get a boss. Just come up now and get the beautiful, beautiful diamonds, which give you so much money, you don't really know what to do with it. Kind of defeats the point, really. Look at all that money. Level 8 starts with a naked man. Good to see we've got our priorities straight. And this is another level where, for the most part, you can just stick to the water. I don't know why they did this, but it makes sense that a sea otter would be able to swim really well, doesn't it? While we take out the only monkey in the game, a naked man gets shot by an arrow. Now, what's coming up is particularly one of the toughest jumps in the game. And the most annoying thing about this jump is when you fail it, you have to go all the way back to just by that shop. So, I'll mention the jump as we're getting up to it, but you can see we've already gone some distance. We have to wait for these guys to stop swinging before we can defeat them. Right, here's the jump coming up. Yeah, if you edge slightly to the platform, you fail. Took me a few tries. Took me a few tries first time through the game, when my recording didn't work, and then it took me a few times this time, and I decided to keep them all in for posterity. Sudden naked guy. Well jumped as well and avoided actually. I forgot he was there and I reacted as quickly as I possibly could and then land on the th on the thing. I'm assuming that's a record. It's hard to see because it's black and the background's black. Okay, the boss of this level is the lady and the guy on the roller skates. Now I find that the best tactic to beat this boss battle is to stand on the edge here and beat up the lady first. And then he just walks off like... Not my problem. We're on the final level. Yes. Just gotta get in this elevator and go all the way up into the unknown, blissfully unaware of how amazingly weird the final boss is. I think at this point you're talking to yourself. And final boss! Yeah, you weren't expecting that. Guy coughing out meteors. Every time you die on this boss you have to go all the way back to the start, go up the elevator, talk to yourself, and then fight the boss. I mean, it's not too much, but it's just annoying that you have to do it every time. Because it is so easy to fail on this boss. As you can see, you just cannot tank hits on this boss. You just can't come in with a full health bar and wail on him. It's not possible. So allow me to show you the perfect method 
And the following recording was not tool assisted in any way, wink wink nudge nudge, of course it was. But if you can manage to do it correctly, and avoid getting hit too many times, what you can do is constantly rely on your special move. Because, I mean, just getting the timing right alone is really, really difficult. I'm not expecting people to be able to do this. The way that guy's head moves is so weird. It's like he doesn't even have a neck. I don't even know what he's meant to be. What, a businessman or something? Anyway, he bows his head in shame. And the game's over. Now, in the previous recording, I got this wonderful screen of the sea otter enjoying life in Hawaii. But when it came to recording the game, I couldn't get that to show up. Instead, I got him dancing in the Arctic. But you think I'm going to play through the whole game just to get you that screen? Nah. You could do it yourself. So there you have it. Utsuren Des. A comedy game with some very interesting ideas, marred by very, very poor playability, awkward controls, finicky physics. Play it? Sure, sure, go ahead. If you feel like it, go ahead, put yourself through it. I mean, it's not a week of Garfield bad, okay, it's, it's not that bad. It's interesting, and it has quite a few cool things going for it. But, you've played one level, you've basically played them all. Still, it's an interesting curio, and if you're a collector, I'm sure it wouldn't go amiss amongst your collection. But if you're loading up these games to have fun, yeah, skip it. Just skip it. This has been Sushi Bites on Utsurundes. Until next time.